Dave Spencer and I'm going to present VisiRule. VisiRule is a graphical expert system from a company in London called LPA. LPA stands for Logic Programming Associates. LPA have been working with EMDS for several years now. LPA is a small company who set up in 1981 and have been working in AI, otherwise known as artificial intelligence, since then. In those days, AI had a broad meaning and the area in which LPA has been working is sometimes called rules-based systems, knowledge-based systems, expert systems. In today's reinterpretation of the word artificial intelligence, AI has sometimes, unfortunately, only become associated with machine learning and black boxes which can tell you what you're looking at. LPA have been working with various businesses and in uh, the late 90s developed a document automation system that was very successful and that became a commercially available product under the name Contract Express. LPA has been servicing its customers worldwide since its inception in 1981. If we look at a diagram of the domain, we can see that in the top left hand corner we have the interactive extraction of rules from domain experts. In the bottom left hand corner, we have the automatic derivation of knowledge from machine learning using induction. In the top right hand corner, we see the deployment of expert systems as interactive questionnaires. And in the bottom right hand corner, we see rules being embedded within other processes. So what is VisiRule? It's software, a bit like MindMap, a bit like Visio, that allows domain experts to draw models that capture their knowledge, allow them to explore their knowledge and execute that knowledge as a set of logical rules. It's no code in that at the simplest level, you just draw a chart and that's it. Low code, because if you want to, you can actually get inside it a bit and tweak the rules. And actually no cliff, because you can even drop to the underlying prologue language and control everything. So the authoring tool is a very simple visual point and click interface. And these charts are typically published as interactive web sessions. And the web session will collate the various answers and trigger reports and produce instantiated documents. Here's a simple chart on the right hand side. The bigger boxes are questions, the white boxes are the available answers, the green box is a start, the red box is an end. Here's another chart with one, two, three, four, five. Notice now we're branching, but we're also able to converge. The fact that we have convergence in our tree means the tree is actually a directed graph. This is a far more powerful way to represent knowledge. We can actually extend the logic in the white boxes, the expressions to be compounded. So we have Q1 equals yes and Q2 equals yes versus Q1 equals no and Q2 equals yes, etc., etc. So we can articulate all combinations of logical expressions thereof. And that is a picture showing one, two, three, four, five different charts. Each chart is dealing with a different aspect of a topic. 
the idea with visual is that you can represent your knowledge visually in visual and the visual will automatically generate the code needed to walk through that chart and that will happen within EMDS at runtime. Thank you. We're going to look at how we can get from data to a deployed expert system in under five clicks. Let's start by looking at some data. Excel, here we have our sensors for the various flights over time. We can push this into a machine learning algorithm and it will generate us a decision tree. I'm not going to show you that. That's standard. But what we can then do is export the decision tree as PMML, and then we can import that into Prolog. Let's fire up a Prolog, and let's import PMML. Go to disk, pull out one of our uh, many PMMLs, and uh, load it up. Now, on the left, we see the XML data with all the nodes, the counts, and the splits. And on the right, we can see some sort of internal rule representation. We can save that file as a visual chart. CS4, it's my fourth go, fourth time lucky. And now, we will get a visual chart. Let's get that out of the way. And we can see some information on it. And it has an average path length of 6.2. Okay. Here's our chart. We can do what we like to it. So one thing we might want to do is say, OK, we don't really need this. We can delete that. Or we can just check those expressions directly. OK, we could make more changes, but that's enough. That's enough. So let's save it, CS4. I'll now switch to another prologue with an uploader. And I will open that file, which was CS4. And um, we want visual. There we are, top of the tree. Okay, there's the chart. Yeah, we could add in explanations or do other things, but we're just going to push it. So we go to the web, let's call it demo four, click the right file, and push it up to our visual server, cloud based server, which will walk through this chart, extract all the relevant bits, and publish us an interactive web-based questionnaire. It will also generate an SVG image of the chart. So we can now answer the questions generated from this chart interactively. Pause. Now we see the chart. First question, let's put in a value of 0 0.77. And that takes us to the right. And then maybe let's put in a value of 145. So this is all generated dynamically. And uh, it's useful because it helps me remember what values are going to give me a fairly interesting result. So I'm going to put in something greater than 0 0.3, so maybe 0 0.35. And then I want to come down um, the next branch, which will be, uh, say, 26. Okay. 
that should get me to the end and it will generate me a report and the report contains uh, a question trail of all the uh, answers and the whole conversation of the session so um, that will appear in a file and the file is stored on the server and that file can also be generated as XML and the XML can be passed through to other processes. So let me now pause to show you is we can run this chart as a bot so if I go to my air handler I can now run it as a bot let's select an air handler select an airport and now I'm going through the interactive questions this time with the neural net plugged in this time with explanations plugged in and uh, we're doing the same interactive logic, but at this stage we can ask, well, why? Why are you asking me about numerical sensors? And how did we get to this point in time? So we have a much richer interaction going on here. We could have links. So this would be very useful for maybe advising people what was going on. Let me put in a couple more values, 160, and finally 25 and it will come to some conclusion and it tells me it's a turbine actual bearings and it can export a trail of this conversation for me so there we've seen the same logic deployed in multiple ways